From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Ben Stacy, partner. Oh, hi, Stacy. We'll be docking a day car in an hour or so now. Yeah, I know. But don't forget, I'm going to show you and Helen around the town. Okay, I'll be ready. Say, Dollar, that was a little excitement we had aboard ship last night, huh? That steward who fell overboard? That's putting it politely. Well, what do you mean? I think he got pushed. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location at sea on the Southern Empress, our route Cape Town to Dakar. To the Home Office Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town Matter. Expense account concluded. <laughs> Item 12, 50 cents, room service on two aspirins. Right from the start, this whole deal had been a series of headaches. Headache one, Andrew Forbes, international playboy and owner of the star of Cape Town, insured for 150,000 bucks. Forbes was tossing that stone around like it was a cheap toy. He wound up murdered, the diamond missing. Forbes' probable killer, Julio Biak, was in a Cape Town jail at the moment, but his confederate was still on the loose. The steward who could have told me who the confederate was had been fished out of the drink dead last night. Now we were going ashore at the car, and whoever had that diamond could make it hard for me to find. It could be Stacy, the boy from the wide open spaces. It could be Helen, traveling companion to Agatha Forbes. And I knew if it did turn out to be Helen, it'd leave me kind of sick inside. Worst of all, it could be somebody I didn't even know about. Hence the aspirin. Stacy had asked us to meet him at the gangway at 10 o'clock, but he was nowhere in sight when I showed up. Pretty soon, Helen and Agatha Forbes came along. Good morning, Johnny. Hi, Helen. Miss Forbes. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. Helen just told me about what happened last night. Somebody trying to seize her on deck. How dreadful. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you, Miss Forbes. No, I... no, I'm glad you did. Anything happened during the night, Helen? No, I kept my stateroom door locked. Well, here you are. Sorry I'm late. I guess I overslept. Already? Already. Say, now, I'm mighty glad to see you with us, Miss Forbes. I was hoping you'd come. I won't be going with you. I'm going to stay aboard and rest. Oh, come on now, Miss Forbes. Do you good to let your hair down and frisk around a bit. Really, Mr. Stacy, I assure you I don't feel like frisking around a bit. I'll see you when you get back. Say, now, I guess I put my foot in my mouth talking that way. Oh, well, I usually do anyway. It's sure big enough. <laughs> well, one thing I had to give Stacy credit for, he was a good guy. He threaded us through street after street in the native quarter of the car. Narrow passageways crowded with people in stalls where native hawkers were peddling all sorts of merchandise. This is fascinating, isn't it? Well, like I told you, Helen, day car's quite a place. I love it. I wonder if it isn't about time we started back to the ship. Say, just a minute, Helen. I think there's a shop around here you'd be interested in. Silks, perfume, stuff like that. You interested? Sure. Well, let me get my bearings a minute. You need more perfume? Johnny, does it bother you that I still wear this perfume Andy Forbes gave me? If it does, I won't. Yeah, yeah, the shop I had in mind is right down the street. Come on. Stacy led us to the shop. Helen began trying on dresses and robes. This I didn't like. If she had the diamond, this was a golden opportunity to pass it along. But there wasn't much I could do about it. Then all of a sudden, I realized that Stacy was nowhere in sight. I went outside and started along the street looking for him. Then I spotted a man following me, a native in a burnoose. So I ducked down the next alley to shake him. But he didn't shake. Then I noticed that this was a blind alley. The native was closing in. And what he had in his hand looked strangely like a knife. Suddenly, a door beside me opened. Come on in, Dollar. Stacy. I said, come on in. A gun in front of me, a knife behind me. I guess I don't have much choice. So, you had your stooge steer me here. I figured sooner or later you'd start looking for me, so I just thought I'd make it easy for you. Oh, thanks. Stick around, Hassan. I may need you. Very well. Hassan's a pretty effective persuader, Dollar. How jolly. So you're the boy I've been after, Stacy. Correction. You're the boy I've been after, Dollar. What are you talking about? A diamond called the Star of Cape Town. Let's have it. Oh, look, don't give me that routine. 
Falls was knifed by your buddy Julio Biak in Cape Town. You killed the steward aboard ship to keep him from telling me it was you who sent the cablegram to Julio. Right, boy, Dollar. That should mean you've got the diamond. Smarten up, boy. You think I'd have arranged this little reception for you if I already had the stone? Wait a minute. You're the one who was doing all the room searching aboard ship? I'm the one. Now let's have it. I don't have it, Stacy, and I don't know where it is. Oh, you got a real sense of humor, Dollar. So has Hassan. Why don't you show him, Hassan? Very well. <coughs> oh. Hey, look, this isn't going to do you any good. It's not going to do your face any good either, Hassan. <coughs> hey, look, you... Don't try it, Dollar. I guarantee you'll get yourself shot. Now, look. So you're a nice, brave boy, but you're being foolish. It's no good trying to snow me. I got it all figured out. Just what have you got all figured out? It isn't in her stateroom. It isn't in yours. I searched them both again this morning before we came ashore. That's why I was late. You're but... talking about Helen. Who else? That's why I steered her to that shop to try on dresses. The little lady who owns it is a friend of mine. She'd have found the diamond if Helen was carrying Helen? It. Yeah, Helen. How do you know she had it? Process of elimination, buddy. She was the only one with Forbes before Julio got to him. I've been watching you and Helen like a hawk dollar. There's only one time she could have given you the stone. That was during that tender little clinch on deck last night, right under my nose. Right under? What's the matter, dollar? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, what Stacy had just said popped the whole deal into place suddenly. Right under my nose. Right where it had been all the time. I tell you what, Dollar, you got just five minutes to tell me where that diamond is. Hassan will be here with you, and he's going to start persuading again if you don't talk. I had to get back to the ship somehow. That meant I'd have to do some fast talking. I looked at Hassan. I couldn't tell which was glittering more, his black eyes or the knife he held against my throat. One wrong word, and I knew he'd start carving. Hassan. What do you want? Um, you come from the desert, don't you? Why? You're a long way from home. Ever get homesick? What do you mean? Oh, I, I was just thinking, with half the money from that diamond, you could buy yourself an oasis with all the trimmings. Do not worry. Stacy will pay me well when we get the jewel. Well, what's he giving you for this job? Three goats and a new burnous? Dollar. Hey, he was easy with that knife. It's just that everybody who works for Stacy seems to wind up getting paid off the wrong way. The wrong... Take Julio Biak for one. The guy Stacy hired to get the diamond in the first place. He's roosting in the Cape Town jail right now. You lie. Oh, no, you can check on it. Then there's the steward who sent Stacy's message to Biak. He got shoved overboard. You can check on that, too. But uh, I'm sure a thing like that wouldn't ever happen to you. Go on, Dollar. Okay. I know where the diamond is. How do I know I can trust you? You can come with me to get it. I don't know. I... At least he was thinking about it. And that's all I wanted. His eyes got that faraway look. That's what I was waiting for. I whipped my arm up and knocked his knife loose. I buried my fist in his midsection. He jackknifed. A rabbit punch finished him off. I dove for the wall just as Stacy came charging in. What the... I just... kicked the gun out of his hand. I went to work. Stacy was rugged, but I finally made it. I got the Dakar police to put Stacy and Azan on ice, patched up my face, and headed back to the ship. But there was something else hurting me a lot more than my face. Helen. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Where have you been? I was... Your face, what happened? Skip it. I have to hand it to you, Helen. That was a real Class A snow job you pulled on me. What are you talking about? Yeah. It was right under my nose all the time. The perfume Forbes gave to you. Now, where's the bottle? Well, on my dressing table, okay. but... Okay. A yeah, pretty fancy bottle. Solid base. Or maybe not so solid. Johnny! Uh-huh. In the base of the bottle. Star of Cape Town. I'll bet you're real surprised, aren't you? Johnny, I didn't know it was there. I didn't have any idea. I swear it. She's telling the truth, Mr. Dollar. Miss Forbes. Wow. Well, Agatha, that gun looks sort of out of character. Perhaps. I won't hesitate to use it if necessary. I don't understand. It was cruel of Andrew and me to use you like this, Helen, but we saw no other alternative. Wait a minute. You and your brother rigged this whole deal right from the beginning, didn't you? Sure. Sure, because you slipped yesterday, Agatha, when you told me you'd discussed your brother's party with him. But back in Cape Town, he told me it was a surprise party for you. Johnny, I still... Oh, it's simple, Helen. That bottle of perfume would have turned up missing when you got to New York. 
Agatha would have appropriated it. One big question, Agatha. Why all this? Have you any idea what it means to see somebody drag the family name through the dirt time after time with his wild escapades? And have you any idea what those escapades cost? Your brother was in debt, huh? Terribly. We were pressed to the wall. Oh, why didn't you sell the diamond? We were bound by the will not to. But arrangements were made with someone in New York. What we could get for the diamond, plus what we could collect from the insurance. It would be enough. Oh, nice little scheme. But you didn't figure on Julio Biak trying for the diamond in Cape Town and killing your brother in the process. No. First, I didn't know what to do. But it soon became clear that more than ever, I had to go through with a plan. My brother's creditors began to make trouble right after his murder. The diamond, please. Oh, now look. Don't you get it, Agatha? You're licked. What do you mean? You've done all this to protect the Forbes name. Of course. You failed. The story's out. No. It's known only to the two of you. How are you going to keep us from talking? I'll do whatever is necessary. Bribe us? Kill us? Sorry, neither one's going to work. Mr. Dollar, do not force You're me... You're trapped, Agatha, by the same thing that got you into all this, the Forbes name. Are you going to brand it with murder? No. No, I don't think you are. I don't think you could. I... I don't... I, I don't know. Please, please, Mr. Dollar... I'll take the gun, Agatha. Thanks. Oh, Johnny... It's okay, Helen. I guess I... I have failed, haven't I? All the way. Expense account item 13, $375.50. Transportation and incidentals from Dakar home. Expense account total, $1,283.60. I turned the diamond over to the authorities for safekeeping and Agatha Forbes to face charges of fraud. Julio Biak and Ben Stacy were indicted for the murder of Andrew Forbes. Remarks about Agatha. I guess she did what she did because she thought the end justified the means, which is one of the oldest sucker traps of them all. About Helen? Well, now that she's no longer a suspect, could be I'm no longer building up to a big letdown with her. At least it hasn't come yet, and I'm still waiting. And the waiting is real pleasant. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a yacht that wasn't there and a man who wasn't there. They never were. But that's where I found them. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is written by Robert Reif and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gene Tatum, Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Chester Stratton, Marvin Miller, and D.J. Thompson. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Roy Rowan speaking.